Now, in this video, we're going to see what happens if we just add a constant, just add a number onto the angle BX. So in the last video, we had an angle of BX only. I'm going to start by setting C equal to zero. I also have that B is one and A is one. So basically here, we just have the graph of sine of X. So this is the first uh, sine f f graph that we looked at. We know that its range is from minus one to one and the period is 2 pi over 1 or just 2 pi. So I'm going to keep A and B set to 1 but I will vary C. So I'll increase C and as you, as you can see here as C increases the function appears to be moving to, to the left, the graph appears to be moving to the left. But the range and period haven't changed. So changing C just shifts the graph in the X direction. The shape of it stays exactly the same. Actually increasing C sh shifts the graph to the left. Decreasing C shifts the graph to the right. By the way, C is in radians, so when we say the period is 2 pi over b, we are assuming that angle x is in radians. So if we increase c up to 1, we have shifted the graph to the left by 1 radian. Remember, pi radians is 3.14. So by increasing c by 1, we just shifted the graph uh, by 1 unit to the left. That's about a third of the distance of 0 to pi. So we will compare the situation where c is equal to 0 to the situation where c is equal to 1. Now I've just put the graph of sine of x next to the graph of sine of x plus 1. Let's look at this peak of the sine of x graph. It has been shifted by one unit to the left to get a peak of the graph of sine of x plus 1. So this value here is pi over 2 minus 1. Now I'm working in radians here. It would be a mistake to write down 90 degrees minus 1 because this 1 is not 1 degree. This 1 is 1 radian. So I will just work in radians. So I've just shifted everything by one radian to the left. So pi over 2 gets shifted to pi over 2 minus 1. So I'll call this function f of x. So let's work out f of this quantity here. f of pi over 2 minus 1. Well, we just plug pi over 2 minus 1 in for x. And you see we have to add 1. So this here is x x is pi over 2 minus 1. And uh, in this function we have to add 1 onto it. So you see we get sine of pi over 2 and we know that that's equal to 1. I'm going to call this function here sine of x h of x. So we can see that f of pi over 2 minus 1 is the same as h of pi over 2. So you get h of pi over 2, we go up to the graph and across, and we get 1. So you see that subtracting 1 from the value of x gives the same value for f of x as h of x did before we subtracted 1. So f of x minus 1 equals h of x. So you can see that by adding 1 onto x, we ha have to shift the graph 1 radian to the left. Now the opposite would happen if we subtracted 1. If I made this minus 1 then this red curve would be got from the sine of x curve by moving the sine of x curve one unit to the right. Now things get a bit more complicated if we have some other number in front of x other than 1. What happens then if we add say some value like plus 1 onto b of x? 
So we will be looking at the graph of b of x and adding 1 onto it, say. Let's suppose that b is equal to 3. So we get a graph whose period is 2 pi divided by 3. So the period of this graph is 1 toward the period of sine of x. Now let's see what happens if we increase the value of c. Let's increase it to plus 1. So the graph is shifting to, to the left because we're increasing c. So we went, the gap is, I'll just indicate the gap. It's this distance here. I'll just go back to c equals 0 again just to show that. So what is this gap here? I'll just show it again. I'll bring c back to 1. So we have the graph of sine of 3x plus 1. And now let's go back to the graph of sine of 3x again. This is the graph of sine of 3x. Actually, for calculation purposes, I'll look for the distance between the graphs by looking at the point x equals 0. So here we have the graph of sine of x again, and uh, this time I'm going to increase c to 1. Actually, we want b equal to 3. I'll just bring b up to 3. Okay, so now we start off the graph of sine 3x, not sine of x. Here c is equal to 0, and let's increase c by 1. So now the gap that we will look at is this gap here. Of course, this gap is the same gap that we saw at x equals pi. We see that whatever value of x this is, the sine of 3 times it is going to be 0. So let's say this is x. Well, our function is sine 3x, so we see that sine... Well, I should say sine 3x plus 1 equals 0, so that's our function. So looking at this point here, plug this into this function we get 0 because the graph cuts the uh, x-axis here. But now let's go back to c equals naught again. So for this graph here, sine 3x, we see that the value of the function at x equals naught is naught. So this graph cuts the x-axis at naught. So the sine of 3 times naught. So we get naught. So this function here is this one here, of course. So um, we're interested in the value of x that gives us naught from uh, the other function. So we want the value of x that makes this angle in here equal to to 0 basically, because when we plug 0 in here we get 0. Or whatever the value this is on the right hand side of this uh, line segment here. It happens to be 0 here, that's why I, I chose it here rather than over here, otherwise we'd have to work with pi. It's just a little bit easier. So this end of this segment is 0. So we plug 0 into the other function, which is the sine 3x function. And uh, we want uh, this expression here, 3x plus 1, to equal the result when we plug 0 into the other function. Well, the result here, of course, is 0. 3 times 0 is 0, so we put 3x plus 1 equal to 0. So, if we solve this, we get x equals minus a third. So, the gap between the two functions is 1 third. So, let's see that again. So, we move 1 third of a radian. Let's go back here to 1. And uh, if I change c to 0, we shift this one third of a radian to the right. So in general, the gap between the functions a sine of bx plus c and a sine of x is minus c over b. If this number is less than 0, if this number is negative, we shift the sine function to the left. It doesn't matter about the a in front of these, by the way. We could just leave that out. That makes no difference. 
So we shift the sine function to the left if this is less than zero. If this turns out to be greater than zero, we shift the sine function to the right. So in the example that we had, this gap was minus a third. So we shifted the sine function to the left. And uh, we ended up getting this function here, which is sine of um, 3x plus 1. Again, it doesn't matter about what's in front of these. We, we had one in front of them, actually. It doesn't matter what the amplitude is. So how do we arrive at this gap? Well, we just put what's inside here equal to 0. So in general, if we put um, bx plus c 